If you are thinking about buying a house, you may have stumbled upon the phrase debt to income ratio. DTI ratio is probably one of the biggest contributors to whether you get pre-approved for a loan or not. Today, I'm going to talk to you about what DTI is and how you can calculate it so you know exactly how much house you can likely afford. My name is Nicole Nark. I am a real estate broker in central Arkansas, and let's get right into it. In the simplest bare bones terms, all DTI is, is your monthly debt payments that you're responsible for divided by your monthly gross income. So let me show you how easy it is to calculate. First thing you're gonna to wanna to look at is your gross monthly income. Now how you find this, this is your pre-tax income for the year. So as you can see in this example, I've used $60,000 a year. To find the gross monthly income, we're gonna go ahead and divide that by 12, and that will give us $5,000. Moving into your monthly debt payments, I wanna spend a moment talking about this. When we talk about debt payments, I'm not talking about your utility bills or the amount you spend on groceries, Starbucks, anything like that. I'm specifically referring to debts that hit your credit, that are reported to your credit score. So examples of that would be your credit cards, car payments, student loan payments, if you have an existing mortgage right now, all of those things, if you have a, a boat loan, anything that is reporting to your credit, we're going to look at those for your monthly debt payments. Now, we don't need to count the balances. We are going to use your minimum monthly payment for each of these options. So for example, let's say that I pay $200 every month towards my credit card. That's my minimum due each month on my balance. Even if I'm contributing more, let's say I'm contributing $400 a month to pay a balance down, we're just using the required minimum in this section. Now, car loan, let's put $400 there. And student loan, we're gonna go ahead and say that's $400 as well. We're gonna go ahead and add up these debt payments. That would give us $1,000. So now that we know our monthly debt payments and our gross monthly income, we're gonna divide the 1,000 by the 5,000. That's going to give us 0.2. In order to know the ratio, you're gonna multiply that 0.2 by 100, and that's going to give us 20%. This 20% is where, in this example, I stand currently. 20% is my debt to income ratio without factoring a house payment. So, when you are getting a loan, Different lenders vary in regards to what they are looking for for your debt to income ratio, as well as different loan programs like an FHA versus a conventional versus a USDA loan also have differing maximums that you can have as a debt to income ratio. For this example, I am going to use a maximum of 45% debt to income ratio. That is a good goal for when you're working this calculation out because that will be accepted by most lenders and most loan types. So our goal with our house payment is to stay at 45% or lower. Let's go ahead and factor in how having a house payment with these current monthly debt payments would affect this percentage knowing that we need to stay under the 45 percent so i went ahead and i drew up some numbers here if i am thinking about having a house payment that is fifteen hundred dollars a month and i know that i already have this one thousand dollars that i'm dropping down that would give me a monthly debt payments of 2,500.
if we divide this 2,500 by the 5,000, which I know I have coming in every month, that would give us 0.5 times 100, 50% DTI. This is a little bit high for the goal of staying under 45%. So since this $1,500 mortgage payment is a little bit high and it pushes us into a higher DTI, I'm gonna go ahead and work it with a 1250 payment. So we're going to bring the monthly debt payments that we already have, we're gonna add those together and that'll be 2250. This 2250 is our new monthly debt payments if we have a mortgage of 1250. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna divide this by our monthly gross income. And that is going to give us 0.45 times 100, 45%. If your monthly debt payments are here and you are trying to figure out the maximum amount that you can afford a month, $12.50 for most lenders would be it. Now I say this and my last disclaimer is just because you can afford up to $12.50 a month in this example does not mean that you have to go that high. You are the only person that knows your own budget. Your lender doesn't, your realtor doesn't. So you need to make sure that these numbers are going to work for you as well. Just because you can go up to 45%, potentially with some lenders, maybe 50%, doesn't mean that you need to because that's when you may get yourself into strapped situations. If you have followed me through this, make sure to give this video a like. I am really excited and happy to have shared this calculation with you all. You now have a great tool in your tool belt when it comes to realizing if this year is going to be a great year for you to buy a house. If you have any questions about this, feel free, please leave me a comment in the description box and I will help clear anything up. I will also link my contact form where you can fill it out if you have a specific issue or you want my opinion on your specific situation, let me know, I'm happy to help.